For the next 11 minutes, Kevin Martin is demonstrating the pre-scrape pebble, ice scraping, game pebbling, and conditioning of the pebble. Prior to the start of his curling supplies and curling equipment sales, he was an ice technician for four years. I believe you will find this video informative and interesting. This ice maintenance would be used mainly for correcting small imperfections in the ice. There usually is not enough time between draws and a bond spiel. So you always want a pebble before you, uh, before you scrape, and the reason being there's always handprints, knee prints, uh, embedded dirt, that kind of stuff, and any of the dirt will actually come to the surface through the pebble. So it'll give you a nice consistent scrape if you uh, hot pebble first. Nice warm water, or hot water's best if you have that in the club. So after the draw's done, you want a quick scrape, pebble first. As far as how much water to put on, your normal pebble head's fine. If you have a little coarser pebble, it's probably a little easier, but somewhere around a, a minute from one end to the other is probably a nice amount of time. The normal pebble, of course, before you curl is gonna be quicker than a minute. This is just to fill in uh, any little spots you have in the ice. I'm trying to get the pebble obviously to the boards, but somewhere around uh, maybe a foot, a little over a foot past the center line is where I'm trying to get that pebble to. Most play is into the middle now in curling. And so when you're pebbling down the, uh, down the sides, you'll see the ice makers at the, at the briar or at the slam events, they'll always pebble down the edges. And what they're really trying to do is build up the edge a little bit, very little. It's not dishing the ice, but you're just giving it those rocks that late snap that you see on TV when the rocks are coming down, they snap in. That's what, this is what actually causes that. You want to start with the pebble about not further than two feet over the hog line on the house side. And you want to go to about the four foot line. If you go further to the house, you lose it. It won't, uh, it, it won't occur. So about two feet over the hog line. And this is a nice thick pebble being put on. And that's almost exactly to the four foot line. If you go closer to the center line than that, then you will end up with dished ice and you won't be able to go around the center guard or the corner guards. So what we've done is we've put it, we've put pebble to the edge of the four foot line. And now if you want to go, yeah, I don't know, two, three feet from the edge. This, you want to make sure you don't get that fall to the boards. As a curler, I hate that. And so you just two, three feet from the edge. This will get nice curl. You can go around the corner guards the wide way this way. Uh, just makes for a little bit more fun in the game. The flow of air will eat the ice away along the boards all the time. So this is just making sure that doesn't occur, get a nice curl away from the boards. All right, ready to scrape. If you have a new blade or you just want to test your blade to make sure that it's, it's true and flat and not, uh, not bowed or whatever the case may be. And now it's just a matter of, of pushing it ahead just a couple of feet and making sure that it cuts true across and that, that's a beauty. If it was bowed in the middle or there are areas that weren't cutting right, you'd see more snow in that area. So then you know that there's, there's an issue with the blade. As it turns out, the blade's really good, we're ready to go. So you've pebbled before you scrape and now you've tested the blade before you scrape. So now, all right, we're ready to have at her. Yeah, it's real nice. So now when you're scraping, the scraping pattern, you can tell that I went close to the boards on that side. Coming back, I say I'm staying a little ways away from the boards. This is a real basic pattern, but it works really well. It's what I use before our team practices every single time. We always pebble and scrape the ice before every practice. What we've done is we went around the sheet on the outside so you can see a, a little wee bit more snow here than here. And that's very common because the outside of the ice, because it's not used very much, has more pebble. It hasn't been worn down as much. So you always see that. That's why it's important to test the blade out front of the house to make sure it's true. Because when you get to the other end, you can see that the ice doesn't show that. And that's very important. It'll always be like that every single time. We're going to overlap center on the second pass.
and just overlay, overlap center just a little bit on the way back. You always want to angle the blade away from the walk, and that's just in case you hit it. Over all the years, you'll, uh, you'll hit the wall eventually. Now, this is where I stayed away from the wall in the first pass. Now, I'm gonna be going close to the wall. One thing you don't want to do is continue to go down the wall every time, because then you're gonna cause a run in the ice down the edge of the four-foot line. And I remember for years and years, people always thought that it was the, it was the four-foot line causing the run. Well, it never was. All it is is the distance from the edge of the blade to the edge of the blade, that's what always causes the run. So now going back, we'll stay away, maybe eight inches, 10 inches from the edge. See how far the blade is across the four foot line now, it's about eight to 10 inches. Never go down the same spot twice. Now last time, we overlap center by about five, six inches. This time, we're gonna overlap a little bit more. There's holes in the blade. That's a nice, easy way to remember. I was one hole the first time, three hole this time. Edge of the tire. Pick your spot, whatever you wish it to be, as long as you remember for the next time, that's all. You will note there's very little tilt on the Eversharp blade, and it's providing a deep scrape. Because the game's played to the middle, I always like to go down the middle one extra time. I, I hate it if I can't come around the center guards as a skip to be able to freeze or get yourself out of trouble. And I don't think it matters if it's in competitive play or, or in club play, you want to be able to get around those center guards. So I always go down the middle an extra time just to make sure we don't get that peaked center. So I went three hole last time, which is right here, edge of the tire. You choose whatever you want to use as a line. And it's a real basic path, it works great. So it's easy, it's quick between games, and you'll be left with a real true sheet of ice. Now what I'm looking for, if I, you can see me looking at the ice, what I'm watching for is making sure there's no runs in it. Now, as you look across, you can see it's been flattened, it's been cut off, all the pebbles, but it's very consistent as you go across the sheet. There's no runs in the ice. If you have a run, you'd be able to see the whole pebble because of course it's a valley and the blade wouldn't have hit it. It should also be noted that the Eversharp blade provides an extremely smooth and shiny surface finish. You can see that it's been cutting very true, right from edge to edge. And so this is an excellent, excellent sheet of ice. Okay, to make the ice keener, what they used to do years ago is they would take the snow from outside the building, throw it on the ice, and, and push it around. And uh, so now we scrape the ice, you can leave the snow at the end, and what will give you a little keener surface is instead of putting the snow into the garbage right away, just shoot it out into the ice surface, it'll temper the surface and you'll have the ice surface be a little crisper, you'll have it an extra probably half a second quicker. It's just an old trick that the ice makers used to use years ago, still works today. See, and by pushing it down the surface, if there is any little bit of dirt or anything on top of the ice still in, embedded in the ice, any kind of a, you know, soda in some cases, in some curling clubs, or impurities in the water, by dragging the snow over, the impurities will come up into the snow. A lot of times you get, get events where the ice maker goes really slow to put lots of pebble in the running path. Well, the problem is that all you're doing is putting a whole bunch of water it's not actual pebble, it's, it's, I guess it's pebble water, but it's just a lake. So instead, I always like to start going across, getting out there to, I don't know, middle eight, something like that, let it freeze. So now you just have a real fine pebble there. And now I want to go about almost to the four foot line on the other side, going down. And the reason being for that these days is that almost all the play, the rock seldom gets totally outside the edge of the four foot line. If you take edge of eight foot, that means your rock should get one inch over the four foot line for a direct line from hack to broom. And not often anymore is the game played outside of that. So most of the wear and tear in your ice is between the four foot lines. So if I'm pebbling down one side, 45 seconds, it's the amount of time to pebble over to the four foot line. 
I think that's just about right. Same thing this way, and then once down the middle. And that'll put on a real nice pebble. It's more consistent draw-wise, but you won't get as much curl dragging the rocks as you do nipping. For myself, I prefer dragging the rocks just because it's more true when you go to curl on it. If you find that your ice is, uh, you just can't get the curl, even if you have the temperature around 23 and a half to 24 and a half degrees on the ice, building at around 40 degrees, you scrape the ice real flat, not peaked in the center, and you're still having trouble with the amount of curl. If you wish, you can use a scraping machine and lightly nip the top of the pebble, and you will get more curl, but you've killed some of the uh, life of your pebble. So then if it's a 10 in game, you, you know, you'll probably be running out of pebble by the end with dragging the rocks. You won't have ridges, and it'll be, it'll be very consistent, draw weight from, from uh, side to side all the way across the sheet.